Oh, we're live now. Cool. Hi, everybody. And welcome to the Medium channel where we bring you the spirituality behind the message. And I'm really, really happy and thrilled to be having Lily Nova come on the channel for us and share her experiences, wisdom. So hi, Lily. How are you doing? Hi, thank you so much for having me. It is awesome to be here. And hello, everybody live or watching the replay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So as usual, I'm, I'm going to you know, give the live people just a couple of minutes to come on and we're going to just really, you know, have a nice discussion. Let me turn the things off. <laughs> and uh, hi, Suzette and Colleen and, uh, and Teresa and Jody and Susan and Chris and everybody else is coming on and getting their video. So personally, I've been totally interested in UFOs, Mm -hmm. All that stuff since I was a young child. I mean, growing up, my favorite TV shows were Lost in Space, then followed by Star Trek. So that kind of gives you an idea. And then I love the Twilight Zone, especially about the ones about the extraterrestrials. And of course, what I'm talking, I'm thinking about the episode To Serve Man. <laughs> some, of, some of you may know what that is. But basically, it's these so-called benevolent beings that they come to Earth. They're very altruistic. And, and there's a book called To Serve Man. Well, to make a long story short, eventually they find out that that book is a cookbook. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, but I, I've always been interested. I've always been, you know, fascinated with the stars. I've always felt like, like I come from somewhere else. I know a lot of people feel that way. So mm -hmm. as I was starting to get on, on YouTube, I uh, wanted to do some starseed videos. I mean, I started out as, as a mediumship channel. We kind of expanded into like all the work that I do spiritually mm -hmm. as a medium. I have a 24 seven spiritual practice. It's all centered around spirit and connecting with the, uh, those on the other side as well, uh, as well as guides and angels. So I kind of broadened it. And at one point I started watching some of the, like the UFO channels and the, mm -hmm. And, and those types of channels and the people that channel like the Palladians and Arcturians. And, you know, frankly, some of these channelers were a lot better than others, but, uh, <laughs> but I decided I wanted to do a star seed video. So I started to research. I started to watch people's videos and I came across Lily Nova star seed and spirit was just kind of drew my eyes right there. I mean, I, I just saw the name, you know, not, not even Lily's photo or anything. And they were just saying, pay attention. So I watched one video and I was like, this girl knows what she's talking about. You know, you, you can tell the difference when somebody's genuine, you feel it in your heart versus somebody that's, you know, a lot of people are not genuine. And, and we talk a lot about that. So that's mm -hmm. basically how I found Lily. Oh, excuse me, I need some water. Yeah, stay hydrated, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I really know that in, yeah, wait a second. Now we're getting serious. Plus I look smarter. Uh, <laughs> Lily Nova is a UFO and space photographer, starseed, and ET contactee, a CE5 practitioner. You'll have to, I mean, I, I, I kind of know what that is. You'll have to clue us into what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, channel, channeler and psychic. Her, um, I can't even read my own writing. Her story and footage has appeared in mainstream media, including LAD Bible and the Mirror. She also has been featured on Coast to Coast with George Nuri and shows like paranormal called on camera. UFOs began visiting Lily during COVID while shooting astrophotography. She began documenting these close encounters on camera. She began learning about these otherworldly beings and they taught her how to communicate with them. They taught her how to activate her star C DNA and develop her psychic abilities. She now uses these gifts to channel messages DNA activations and healing on her YouTube channel, Lily Nova Starseed. Lily is dedicated to sharing her findings and experiences with the world and to help others initiate contact and connect with enlightened star beings and, and their star family. So you and I are definitely on the, the same page. So I definitely have to ask you, um, firstly, you know, what what do you define as a star seed? I mean, I know I have a good idea, but but people mm -hmm. define certain terms differently. So um, mm -hmm. let me uh, also share your YouTube channel on the screen with them so they have that. Yeah. So a star seed is is basically somebody, somebody who. Uh oh, I heard a little echo there. 
that's because I just had to turn my volume on because I turned it off to, so that we wouldn't hear, hear the pink. The only problem was I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. So I just turned it back on. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yes. You'll okay. just hear a few pings. Sorry about that. Okay. No worries. Uh, so a star seed is essentially a typically an old soul. Um, I know a lot of you probably resonate with being an old soul, but it is somebody who does not originate from Earth. You've lived in other star systems, possibly even other galaxies. So you have Earth may not feel quite like home. You may feel kind of like out of place on Earth or just be kind of different than the average, um, you know, normie. But <laughs> that's essentially what it is. <laughs> Normie is an expression I use and like very well. <laughs> They're definitely on the same page with that. So I have to ask, what, a, what exactly is a CE5 practitioner? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that there, there's a lineage behind it and everything. Yeah, so CE5, well, just kind of like backtrack. So I was, I've always loved space and I started shooting, I started during COVID, I started going out and shooting astrophotography. So taking pictures of space with my camera. And then suddenly UFOs started appearing and they were like obnoxiously appearing, like getting in front of my camera. Like they wanted me to document it and show people. So I started doing that and then a communication began to develop. Um, and then I came across like CE5, which was essentially what I was doing. You're, you go out and you, you initiate contact with star beings. That's what it is. Um, so it's not just having a UFO sighting. It's like you invite them and, and, and they appear and you're like, hi, or it could also be a spiritual connection. Like what I do on the Sunday live activations, that's essentially CE5, even though UFO is not appearing in the room. Sometimes they can though, <laughs> uh, you know, we're, we're connecting with these human initiated contact with enlightened star beings. So we're connecting with them spiritually. That's cool. Tiffany saying, very cool. I also do CE5 field work. It has been my dream to do astrophotography. Amazing. Thank you, oh. Tiffany. Yeah, it's beautiful. I became addicted to it. I was outside every single night, every night. I mean, I, I'm good at getting orbs and I got so good at it. Like, like, like this, you know, coincidentally or not, there's this place called Lilydale in upstate New York that, that I go to. It's a, it's the largest in all the spiritualist community in the entire world, basically. Spiritualism is largely an American phenomena. And uh, and this is where the mediums hang out. I go there every summer, although I didn't go the last couple of summers. And I, I teach, I do public uh, readings for people all that stuff. And I got to the point where, where I'd ask Spear, where are the orbs? They, 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 they direct my camera to, there'd be tons of orbs in the pictures and wow. stuff like that. So here in the Hudson Valley of New York, now we're, we're, ve we're very close to, um, oh, what's the name of that town? Uh, High Falls, uh, think Whitney Stryber. That's where he's from. You know, the oh. famous author, he's from High Falls. And that's where he, he saw a lot of these UFO sightings. Pine Hill is another big, big hotspot. And not me, but one of my really dear friends who's, who's very level-headed, by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll just put that out there. And we have a, a, a big reservoir that feeds New York City called the Ashokan Reservoir. And she was driving across the bridge. She saw a UFO just go right out of the water, basically. Wow. This big saucer go right out of the water. And I was, yeah, and, and we, we've, I, I've, I, I check out Lily's stuff regularly when I can. And, and we chatted a little bit. So we were talking about my experiences also when I was um, camping out in California with, with, with the Sasquatches. So I think that they're, they're also connected to, oh, yeah. to that. And then basically I never saw them, but their breath was thunderous. And the one day when one was close, I was like walking around and it was downright eerie because uh, there's no sounds, you know, the end, the birds were not chirping. It was like dead quiet and, you know, in these woods. And then I started to hear the breathing. It was so freaking close. Like I could feel it. And then wow. once I got over the fear, like if I, you know, like, like if this thing wanted to kill me, I'd be dead already. Once I realized that it was pretty cool. So, um, let me see. I have a few questions here. Let me see what we want yeah. to ask. You. They like to, the Sasquatch, they like to play around. <laughs> 
Yeah, here. those were three separate encounters. That was really close. But the thing is, it was invisible. There was just no way of not seeing. So it's interdimensional. I heard that about the Sasquatches. And of course, I'm always interested in that. And I, I've always been interested in all this stuff. I, I mean, I, I could tell you a lot of stories, but we mm -hmm. want to hear what you have to say. So mm -hmm. let me just well, ask you. <laughs> what did you uh, I was going to say, I would add that once UFOs started appearing and the, like the star beings, it's very, very connected with the spiritual world. And they yeah. may come as orbs that once I started communicating with them and opened up to them, I started having experiences with fairies, even Sasquatch, mm -hmm. um, uh, past loved ones. So it's just mm -hmm. it's very interconnected. And that's why. A lot of these UFOs, they can be there one second and then they're gone. They go into another dimension or they could be invisible to us. A lot of the time they're cloaked. Yeah, there's a place back at Lilydale. It's called the Fairy Trail. That's the old Fairy Trail, not the new Fairy Trail. They built the new one. And there's a place where, where there's fairies. And if you go the right time, at first you could think that they're dragonflies, not dragonflies, fireflies. But this was at the end of the summer, like well, well past firefly season. And one was close and it looked like a freaking dragonfly standing up. Like I saw the silhouette of a fairy. Like it was amazing. Wow. So, uh, so sometimes they, they come in, in order. But what I wanted to ask is there's any, I mean, you've kind of answered this, but I, watching your live streams, I, I, I take up on bits and pieces and I'm always like fascinated. Like you've got an amazing story. So is there anything mm -hmm. that really like, revealed like any like one thing or or series of things like uh like for example when i was starting to develop my mediumship i was doing psychic readings for years and then i was starting to pick up on the other side i just wanted to know if that was my path and i didn't care and for the first time i've been doing readings for four years at that time and the first time somebody came in for a uh for a mediumship reading they wanted to connect with the dead so I just sat with my guides for a second. I said, I don't really care, but if this is my path, I, I accept it. If not, I don't. Mm -hmm. And so basically to make a, you know, a long story, not as long. <laughs> um, so as soon as I shook his hand, I got father. Let me see if I remember all this now. Father, I felt the sharp pain in my chest, the number 10, the letters REN in an airplane. And but yeah, by the way, I I, I respected mediums. I, I I actually watched John Edwards teach her Shelley Peck. You know, you know, she would go in the audience, get the names and describe the spirits and everything. But I, I didn't see the value in it in the time. So anyway, I promise mm -hmm. it's a short story. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the person basically said, Well, my father died 10 years ago of a heart attack. You know, he, they were, I think, Polish. So he had a long name that began with Arian and he was an airplane pilot. So that, that was my, my answer. But the hour went on. I learned that they had a very difficult relationship. Long story short, when the session was over, he shook my hand and basically said, for 10 long years, I've held on to this grief and pain. And one hour with you, I can, I, I can let it go forever. So to me, that was the defining moment that I was meant to be a medium, basically, and and I feel like I'm 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 expanding beyond that now. But that's incredible. You, yeah, and, and I've heard your stories are, are equally as remarkable. So, uh, <laughs> is there anything that really? I mean, if there's any or anything that really said, okay, this is absolutely my path. Yeah. Well, like I said, in the beginning, it was very much, I wasn't like super spiritual. I didn't know what a star seed was. I didn't know. I just knew that these UFOs were showing up. They were getting in front of my camera and they were, seemed to be communicating with me. Like they were kind of leading me. And um, the moment, whenever I found out, I, I actually, this is before my psychic abilities had developed. I went to um, a group like meditation and the, the, my friend's mom's very clairvoyant. And she said, Lily, your star family's here. And, wow. and I just want to cry thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> um, beautiful. Now, your your I'm, father on the other side, wait a second. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows also. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He he's he he has come to visit since my psychic abilities developed. Um, I have no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah, and so that that moment, finding out that these weren't just like random UFOs, they were my star family. Hi, Codwoke. <laughs> 
uh, I recognize, I recognize you. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank I think you. so too. <laughs> yeah. So that, that moment just changed everything because I automatically just felt so much love and from the star beings, from our star families, they, it's such a pure, just unconditional loving feeling. I've never felt, felt so much love before. It makes you, it makes you cry. It's very healing. So mm -hmm. after I found out, okay, they these aren't just random UFOs. They're my star family. And then I found out, you know, we all have star families, all star seeds. They do. They're here to guide us. That was just, um, I, it solidified my path right there. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can definitely relate to that. And, uh, very good. So the other thing that I'm really curious, and I, I'm not going to share too many more stories because uh, we want you to do more of the talking, but actually we'll just have a conversation. But in any way, I can relate to a lot of like childhood memories that I had. Like, like you know, there's a time I, I swore that my parents adopted me and I wanted to find my real parents. And when I, when I was all of three, I, I was so angry that I couldn't move things with my mind anymore. And I've, I've been kind of slowly writing a book about growing up psychic and everything. And, and actually by writing this book, I started to remember things from before age four that I didn't remember. Like it's almost like spirit like opened up these memories. And my mm -hmm. mom used to say, well, other, other than the fact that if I was her first, there'd never be a second, but my poor parents. Um, but, uh, but you say you were such an angry baby. You were such an angry baby, and I remember, you know, you know, just trying to move something with my mind. It wouldn't budge like a chair, so I'd walk over and kick it over, basically. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I remember being like, and I also want to say shout out Lakeside Laura. Hello, <laughs> Lakeside Laura. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, um, yeah. Growing up, little kind of weird things that I did and used to think about, I realized you know, as everything started to make sense, as, as I was finding out that I was a star seed and what these star beings can do, they can't, they're telepathic. They're very intuitive. They, they, they can do telekinesis. And I've actually been able to do it, moving things with your mind. I saw you you. Shared, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, that. It's incredible. And we yeah. can do that with energy too, energy healing. Yeah. Um, you can heal anything, but, um, yeah, as as a child, or like as I was around like a preteen, I used to like stare at this candle and I would try and like move the flame and uh, I would get really bummed out if like it didn't it didn't work. But now I realize that's why. I mean, we've been we've had these abilities before. Yeah. So that's why we feel drawn to these things. Yeah, that's something that, that I teach people uh, for a variety of reasons, working with the flame. And I teach people, you know, to focus on the flame, become one with it, and then make the flame bigger, make it smaller, then put the flame out. Now, I've never put the flame out, but I've gotten it really small before, but I've never actually put it out. I'm a lot better at making it bigger, <laughs> I'll put it that way, but great, yeah. great stuff, yeah. So, I mean, I know that that our extraterrestrial guides and helpers, that they're working with us in our ascension and in our awakening. Mm -hmm what would you say are like the most important messages that they have for us at this time? You know, it's 2000, what, 22, 2023, mm -hmm. everything's changing. You know, it's the, this big uh, 16 slash tower experience in the world. And, you know, what would you say, you know, mm -hmm. would be uh, something that, that they're, they're really trying to, to guide us in right now? Yeah. One of the main things is remembering. Mm. Like yeah, we, who we are, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are, um, we are very special, and we have we have very special genetics too, very special DNA. This is one of my favorite topics because I just find it so exciting, and I'm also like a science person. I was very much into. Yeah. I was studying the science of consciousness before these UFOs started appearing, and how you can create your own reality. Um. And, and I was also a nutritionist and the brain, I was fascinated by the brain and what you can do with it. Our brains are so powerful. We only use, we only use about 5% of our brain. 
scientists say, and we're only using about three to five percent of our DNA. The other 95 to 97 percent appears to be dormant or they call it junk DNA. It's not doing anything. Mm. So that's one of the biggest messages the star beings were sharing with me and started teaching me is that our DNA is very special. We at whenever it our, we activate our DNA, we develop psychic abilities. We develop um, telekinesis, even energy healing. We just so so we're basically like superheroes. <laughs> we just need to remember that and activate that. <laughs> yeah, as I'm listening to you, I'm understanding more and more why Spirit pointed you out and told me to invite you on the channel. This is all this is all, all stuff that we talk about. You know, I'm a big uh, fan of Joe Dispenza, for example, and Greg yeah. Braden and people like that. So, you know, I, I studied meteorology in college and I minored in psychology. So that, that was what I studied, the weather. And uh, so I came into this from, from a scientific background also. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I find it all, all really fascinating. And yeah, you know, the junk DNA, you know, it's not junk DNA, it's dormant DNA. And mm -hmm. for every percentage of the brain that we use. So if we go from 5% to 6%, it's a logarithmic function because the brain works synergistically. So 1% more brain use means 10 times the brain power. So you, you can imagine if we start to get to 40 or 50%, it's like we can walk through walls, we can grow new limbs and, yeah. and, and we have all these abilities and I'm aware of it. And I, and, and you know, I, I don't know if, I told you this story or not, they, they know very well that, that I used to, I was a very sickly child also, and I had severe, severe chronic eczema. And for three years, every day I, I spent in meditation and I visualized that my skin's perfect. I'm well, and it went away. It took, it took a, a long time and it went away. And, and uh, this is even before I knew about Joe Dispenza's work. This is what Spirit was saying. You know, well, they said, your first step, you've got to stop being angry. You've got to stop being a victim. You've got to stop cursing God and, you know, and all, all that stuff. Oh, no, you, trust me. Um, I, you know, not, not, not to, um, you know, draw attention to myself, but, but I mean, I, no, you're I, fine. I would literally be like up, like every night for weeks, like itching and smearing these mm -hmm. steroids. I mean, I'm 64 now. So it's like, like, like this didn't really heal till my late fifties. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so 60 years of topical steroids, my, my skin was paper thin, my liver enzymes were off. Now, you know, at 64, I'm healthier than I've ever been in my life. I mean, a few little, you know, minor old age things withstanding. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, yeah, you know, and it's all the mind. Yeah, you know, that's it, the mm -hmm. thing. And I love the idea of med beds and all the technology. That's really it's starting to come out. People are starting to experience it now. But mm -hmm. I tell people develop your mind. You know that that's the important thing. It's great to have this technology, but think that when before we had telephones, the Native Americans were communicating telepathically. The chiefs would communicate. They would decide where where the people would meet, and they met there. They did not need a telephone to communicate. So with these modern inventions, we can atrophy. So I'm very careful about stuff like that. And again, I embrace the new technology, but develop the mind, develop the heart. You know, when you develop your heart, mm -hmm. you develop your mind. That's, you know, heart-brain coherence, which is another hot topic on this channel. So- Yeah, you know, the heart is that, the, I will add the, the heart. That's the first thing that the star beings told me as my communication felt like the first like full sentence where it was like telepathy they're like uh your heart needs some work your heart chakra and so I started focusing on that and and yeah they see like the the heart is the key also it's a portal oh absolutely yeah and then you know the research with heart math institute is, is pretty uh and and Joe Dispenza has a lot of research. You know, I, I watched him in one video, and somebody was, this is even before COVID, and he was saying somebody was saying like, so Joe, do you get the, the flu shot? He's like, flu shot? What do I need a flu shot for? I have heart brain coherent. I don't need a flu shot. <laughs> and when you do that practice, you you increase the gamma globulin A, the amino globulin by a factor of fifty percent. So that's my vaccine personally. Nice. Um, I want to say and. Uh, yeah, very good. So yeah, I I, I I totally understand that. And and you know, like I said, I, I feel like I've been working with them. I work with a group I call the master teachers, because that's what Susie Mazzoli called them. 
I think they're, they're also called the Council of Light or, uh, but basically they do energy work. Like, like they're, they're not physical. So they're, they're purely energy. They're purely interdimensional and they work with the Arcturians and Pleiadians. They come to, you know, societies like ours when we're on the threshold of this big awakening that, that we're on right now, when we're ready, it's kind of like finding warp speed basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like they're coming to us and, and, uh, and, and helping us upgrade. So when they do the work through me, um, and they light my energy up as I'm leading the meditation. I know you do activations and uh, maybe we can even ask you to do one tonight for us. Mm -hmm. um, although yours are very different. You used to use the singing balls. They activate my voice and they just, you know, it's just an energetic thing. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, um, they're, they're really here to help us with our awakening and help us to evolve smoothly and, and quickly mm -hmm. and, and start to awaken this junk DNA, which is basically our, 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 uh, dormant superhuman powers and abilities. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, you know, I, I talked about how I discovered my life purpose. I think that that's really, really beautiful with that. And then, you know, one thing else that I wanted to ask is, you know, how is your work going to help people? Now I'll, I'll share a little something that, that, I mean, I, I get impressions. I've been doing psychic work over 20 years. I mean, I'll, I'll never, read anybody or, or or try to pick up on their energy without permission so so you're good just to let you know but uh <laughs> but basically yeah i'll tell you now that, that you, you're you're on the threshold of getting really really big in in your field i want to say and that's one of the reason i wanted to have you now because in, in you know two or three months you, you may be too busy to do the smaller venues which so if i want you back i've got to get bigger myself obviously but uh <laughs> But I definitely see that and I definitely mm -hmm. see you, you being able to help a lot of people. So yeah, if you want to just share how your work may be beneficial mm -hmm. people, I understand that you do private sessions with people, mm -hmm. channeling readings, and mm -hmm. you do a lot of work on your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I started doing like Akashic Star Origins readings. I'm actually uh, I, I don't have any slots open right now. Well, I'm reopening them in February. Um, but there is, if you guys are interested for upcoming like workshops and DNA activations um, and readings, there is like a sign up. It says sign up for email list or whatever in all the description of my, uh, actually it is on my website too. It's up near the top. Sign up for a wait list for DNA activation kits. But um, so I do one on one sessions where I help I go into the Akashic Records. I make contact with uh, people, star families and tell them, OK, you may be maybe you're you're Pleiadian. You've been a Pleiadian healer. Uh, you've lived in Atlantis, you know, and you come from Lyra before that originally. So then there's different star families that will come through. And that's just very empowering to people. It was very empowering to me. Whenever I found out that I was an Atlantean and lived in Atlantis, my jaw dropped. <laughs> I'm not me then because I was there too. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's funny is a lot of us, I find through readings, a lot of people have either lived in Atlantis or Lemuria, and we're starting to find each other. That's the really yeah. cool thing. We recognize each other. Like you feel drawn to people for a reason. Um, yeah. So I do those sessions and I just created like a first group uh, chakra healing session while I'll be working with the inner earth beings. Um, so I, I want to do more group sessions and things like that. And then on Sundays, I do live activations where we connect with different star beings all I channel in a different way it's not like they're not like Bashar where it's taking over my voice or anything like that but they do they connect with my throat chakra um and then I'll channel their their energies their energies these different so we'll work with all different types of you know beings and help activate people's DNA and help them to connect with their star families because whenever you get with your star family and you discover more of who you were before this, you can begin to embody that. And the star beings will help you just like the angels. It's good to have the angels on your side um, in helping you. They help, they make things go so much, you know, smoother. They can do magnificent things. Same with our star families. They can help you with anything. I think I saw a question, Cheryl. Oh, 
So I just want to pop that. And Cheryl, uh, yes. Pleiadian healer. Cheryl, what type of star she is and more about. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good question. Thank you. <laughs> That's a loaded one. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. all around here. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to say, is it Jenna? Sorry, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Sina? Yes, Jenna. Yeah. Uh, Pleiadian healer. So with your background as a Pleiadian healer, you can begin to activate those gifts. That's all in your Akashic records. So you can activate those healing abilities right now. And it's really powerful whenever you connect with the, the Pleiadians. And because they'll, they'll help you upgrade, basically. Um, and I'm a... I'm a Lyran starseed. I'm also a Syrian starseed from the star Sirius and Pleiadian. And I've got some Andromeda in there too. I've got a mix, but I met them at different times. At first I was very close with the Lyrans, um, specifically from the star Vega. They had light blue skin, but they looked very human and they had no hair. Um, and then Pleiadian, Atlantean. So I'm finding that a lot of us, we originate from Lyra and then we may have moved into, you know, a different spot as time went. So we have, we have kind of like a mixed bag. We have different ones that we're being. So, so Lyra, Pleiadian, Syrian, and oh, my experiences. Yeah. One of the big, the big messages, which we kind of already talked about is the heart focusing on your heart healing and opening your heart, opening your heart to allow love in. And then you, your communication with spirit grows whenever you open your heart and just magic happens. So the heart activating the DNA, activating your gifts and beginning to just remember and embody, you know, who you, who you truly are. We're getting our, like, we're remembering our divinity and our superpowers essentially. And, as that happens, life becomes a lot more magical. You start experiencing, you know, crazy things that just don't make sense. Um, <laughs> you know, whenever you're connecting with the universe and, and connecting with these beings. So it's really exciting. Um, and then as for experiences, I mean, I'm just, I am just going with the flow. The star beings, you know, they show, I talk to them every day. I feel them every day. I've met different types of beings. I noticed that they'll come and kind of, um, they'll come like at first the Lyrans came and then the Syrians came and then the Pleiadians came. So we often have different star families and I've just met a very wide variety group. So they keep, they keep things exciting. <laughs> Yeah, they keep things cool. exciting. So I'm, I'm still learning about my starseed origins. I mean, psychics I've gone to always pick up Middle Earth, so that that, that that may be part of it. But but I've always related to Arcturians, and when I, I can kick myself for not reading the book, we are our, we the Arcturians, because I used to work in a store in the '90s, you know, a metaphysical shop of the Theosophical Society in New York, and I saw that title, and and the first time I heard. Arturian, you know, something went off, not Pleiadian, or I don't even know the Lyrian, so I wouldn't even know you know, mm -hmm. that. So I always feel like like I'm part um, Arturian and uh, and then Middle Earth and maybe a few others, but but that's good. There's another. That's, that's, that's incredible. Um, yeah, I love the, the inner Earth beings. Um, it, yeah, it's very intuitive also. So if you feel drawn to a specific or if something catches your your interest, even if you are like drawn, if you feel very drawn to ancient Egypt, you probably live there. If you really feel really drawn to space or um, the the word Pleiadian or Arcturian, that is very intuitive. So trust your trust your intuition. Thanks, Lakeside Laura. She's on the activations. Yeah, they're fun. So for the first part, I kind of chat and share some experiences and share any messages. This is on the Sunday activations I do. And then we'll probably do like a 20, 25 minute guided activation. And a lot of people have very profound either healing experiences where they may receive visions or just, you know, feel better. So, so that's what we do on Sundays. Yeah, they're great. It, in Eastern time, it's 3 p.m., 2 p.m. Central. Um, that'd be noon Pacific time. We have people in Australia, so, you know, that'll be the, the next day. But any, anyways, <laughs> um, 
on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, replace the work. Well, there's a video, so no worries if, if you're if you're not able to, to, to get it at the time. Um, so let's see, any more questions? Mm. Yeah. Um, just looking at these. Yeah, there's a really good Pleiadian book. Suzette mentioned Drawn to the Pleiadians and Barbara Merciniak. Um, oh, I, I had her in, in the shop. Uh, I think it was 2000. I, I was managing the shop, or, or I wasn't managing, I was helping the manager. And we got Barbara Mar Marciniak in, and she uh, did a beautiful talk uh, you know, about Bringers of, I forgot the name of her, Bringers, yep, of, the bringers of the Dawn. And, her, and she had another book out, and she just had a lot of marks on her face. She's saying she's just under so much psychic attack from the work that she's doing. So I actually did it. Went to the back and did the healing on her. So that, that was my experience with Barbara Marciniak. That's mm -hmm. around, around age, that was around 2000. So yeah, wonderful. She was um, having a lot of psychic attacks. That's really sad. That's sad. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I, I'm sure you can relate. I, I understand you. You were at a conference recently. There, there, there was some bad energy you had to kind of work through. So, you know, I get that all the time. I, every day I do clearings and I do, and I do, I have to do my work. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, cause if I'm in my, my zone and my space, you know, somebody can, thinks about me, chances are, are, are almost a hundred percent I'll know it. Cause I'll either feel them or I'll see their image in my mind. And you can imagine like getting on YouTube when, when people are thinking about you all the time, it's like, I've, I've been having to adjust to that energy. It's, it being a natural empath and all, uh, mm -hmm. that's that's something I've had to adjust to. So, um, you know, and anyways, um, yeah, we're going to do actually a quick activation in a moment. So uh, let me just see if there's anything else that Lily would like to add first. Mm -hmm. Any other questions I missed? Yeah, on Thursday, I'll be on Dr. Char Charnel's show, Claire Yay. said. That is right. Um, Callie had, Callie had asked, can you watch your activations and have them work even if you don't do them live? Yes. There's actually a lot of people who, who they can't make it at that time and the replay, you know, it's, it still works for them. It's really powerful whenever you get together as a, a group, um, just, you know, multiple people setting their intention together, but yeah. the replays, the replays work. Am I yeah. getting the right one? Oh, here we go. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, when we do our, our, our activations and transmissions with the master teachers, I always say, you know, we're not a, of this world. We're not of time and space. So anytime you tune in, you tune into the energy and, and it works. And, you know, it, it, same thing happens with our ours with yours. If people have these amazing experiences. I've had several people come back and talk about these crown chakra openings where they just lead their body. They see all these colors and everything. And that's just the, the, the master teachers. That's just the activations that they're doing. Then other people fall asleep. Like everybody has um, that. Oh, let's see what, what, what Michael has to say. He, he comes on very regularly to these things. And to the liberation of humanity, being free from a dev. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, hmm. I, know, I, I know that... I honestly, I don't even ask too much about like the future things like that, because yeah. I know that it's, I know that it's going to be oh, really yeah. good yeah. and we're it, we're in the process of, you know, it's going to get uglier before it gets better, it. Um, yeah. Yeah. but it has to all, all of the systems that are in place right now are being, becoming exposed yep. just like with the, with Elon Musk and the Twitter thing happening the other day. Um, corruption and all of these things are need to be exposed. So it's going to look really ugly and messy, but after it's all exposed and we actually like look at it, they'll, they'll, those, those systems will all fall. So we'll have all new everything. I don't have the exact timestamp on it, but the next couple of years, the next few years are going to be really, really, really big. It's all flu, but astrology and numerology can give you clues and, you know, and people that, that come to my channel know this, but we're in this parade of 16 degree full moons, like uh, tomorrow at, at, um, at 11 here at 1130, I think here, 16 degrees in, in Gemini, jump Mars exactly at 16 degrees. In Chaldean numerology, the, the uh, symbol for 16 is the shattered citadel. 
And then the tarot, key 16 is the lightning struck tower. So this is all happening. And we've been talking about this. This has all been on my 2021 forecast, my 2022 forecast. It's not just my forecast. I have anybody that's connected to, to source and the spirit is saying, you know, in their own way, you know, mm -hmm. the same thing. And it, it's all happening. And this is why work to people like, like Lily that can bring through communication with those beings that are helping us because from my understanding, maybe not 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 blow for blow or step for step, but they've been they've been there, they've done that, they've had their 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 issues on their home worlds and have overcome it and, and they know how to help us to do the same thing. I feel like they're talking about us now just saying, well, it just starts by learning how to just get out of your ego. And how do you get out of your ego? You get into your heart. Because mm -hmm. when you get into your heart, and, you know, again, the heart is the portal, like Lily was saying. And once the heart, once you can hold those magnified frequencies of gratitude, compassion, appreciation, that's when hearts are coherent. That's what heart brain coherence is. Then the brain locks in because the heart has brain cells. They are two parts of the same organ. For you activate mm -hmm. the heart, you activate the brain. So what happens when these two organs come together, we become coherent with spirit also. And then our superhuman abilities awaken. So mm -hmm. very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, very important. And anybody can have, anybody can communicate with their star family. You can just talk to them like they're your guides or angels, you know, just practice talking to them. And eventually they'll, they'll give you some sort of a sign that they are, you know, looking out for you. You may not see them physically, um, but they'll communicate with you. Do you have any any techniques that that might help people with that mm -hmm. communication or? Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, stargazing helps. Just looking outside, you know, getting into a relaxed state is a really, really, you know, pretty pretty important for being able to communicate with them. Um, like even stargazing, spending some time in nature, taking a bath. Meditation helps, but just, you know, kind of silencing your mind or getting in a relaxed state or like a flow state. Some people can communicate or channel through artwork or music. Doing something creative helps you to uh, raise your vibration to connect with them. Using crystals and high frequency music also helps. That's what the star beings told me whenever I wanted to uh, communicate with them was to use crystals and frequency music. Um, and then I also have, an, I think, an 11 minute three keys to connect um, meditation to help you connect with star beings um, on my channel. So you might just have to like go to my channel and scroll down. It's called three keys to connect. It's like an 11 minute meditation. And then I have a, a heart opening one to help you connect with your star family because that's how they communicate. That's how you connect with them is through the heart. So focusing on your heart is very helpful. That is beautiful. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. So would you be up for maybe doing a little mini transmission or? Yeah. 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 Let's go for it. Okay. Oh, yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. Grab, grab my uh, bowl real quick. Okay. Okay. So this is my, this is a, uh, my crystal alchemy singing bowl. So on the live activations, I use different bowls as well. The frequencies really are incredible, very powerful. Um, this is made out of mostly quartz crystal and different types of crystals, minerals. Um, so it's very powerful. So I'll just kind of play this and, and, uh, guide you guys through something short and sweet. So if you guys want to go ahead and kind of relax. Just so, take, take a few it. breaths in. And as you're breathing in, 
Allow these frequencies into your body. With each breath in, breathe in light. You may visualize this light going in through the mouth, through the throat. And this light goes into your heart center. The star beings would love for you to just focus on the heart for a moment. We'll work on opening the heart to allow love light in and And thus a better communication with the divine. So with each breath, you are breathing this light into your heart. Focus on the center of your chest. See your heart chakra. It may look a little dim. It may look a little off or small. We all have past hurts that can cause our heart to be closed off. So as you are breathing in, and we will ask our star families of the highest love and light to be here with us now and assist us with opening our hearts. Feel and visualize your heart chakra begin to grow. The light of your heart beginning to expand. And to assist us, our star families and guides, send more love and light right into our hearts. Healing and releasing anything that can be healed or released at this time. Feel your heart grow with love. And now, beings, assist us with heart and brain coherence. Visualize a light in your brain going down and connecting to your heart. Feel yourself become more relaxed as your brain and your heart connect. We ask Source to assist you each day in heart and brain coherence. Just balancing your heart and brain with every breath. Allowing these healing frequencies in to stabilize your heart and brain coherence. Grounding this energy so that you may keep it. You will now feel more coherence throughout your days. Your heart feels more full. You are more able to live in your heart space. Platinum light shoots out from the center of your heart through the rest of your body and your energy field, just clearing anything that can be cleared, raising your vibration. Light. Light. 
permeating through your body and your aura feeling refreshed feeling lighter feeling brighter feeling loved Feeling heart centered. And if your star family or your guides have a message for you, we ask them to share it with you now. Whatever thought comes to mind. Sending love and gratitude to our cosmic families, our guides, our helpers. Feeling at one last time in your heart space. And now you may begin coming back. Feeling grounded and centered. You may want to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and start coming back to this present moment. And then I always add, let me know how you feel. <laughs> that was a very short snippet. <laughs> This is a really potent and amazing one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. So let's see. We have uh, Lily's website. Uh, let me see if I can find her other links here. Um, mm -hmm. Social media links here. I have to ask you about Linktree. Actually, what I need is somebody. You know, I have to hire somebody to do my social media. Never mind. I won't ask you. I'll hire somebody <laughs> instead. <laughs> Can I? I'm not hopeless. <laughs> oh. Linktree is fairly, it's fairly easy to set up, but yeah, it's just basically a place where you can, yeah, just add various links, different types of links. Okay. I could, Maybe I didn't click on the wrong comment, but uh, yeah, this is the, the video that, that Lily was a prime inspire for. So I did this last March. Um, so I, I'm going to link all this in, on the pinned comment. So I, I know it's hard to pick it up from here. And yeah, there are mm -hmm. Lily's uh, YouTube channel. There we go. All right, and me. I just want to go down the comment thread. Down, 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 down. They put thank you, guys. Up. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed that. That was just a wee little, wee little taste. We do all sorts of different things each each week. Um, and Lakeside Laura, I don't, I didn't hear any chirping. I don't know, but <laughs> my, my house has a portal in it. So there have been, <laughs> there have been uh, some interesting things we've caught on audio and I've had orbs show up in the lives before too. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I totally get that. I totally believe that. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. A lot, lot, lots of good compliments. Well, what else? Any any closing thoughts? <laughs> um, I would just say that there has been a lot of energy going on recently, a lot of things going on recently, um, and I feel we're doing a lot of kind of shedding our density. So, so be 
kind and compassionate with yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Drink plenty of water. Rest as much as possible. Yeah. And yeah, just be compassionate. And, and the star beings keep reminding me, like, anytime I get kind of like stressed or I'm thinking about something, they'll send me a smiley face, an image of a smiley face um, to remind me to just smile. So focus on joy, focus on love. And and yeah, pay attention to your heart. And thank you so much, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Thank you. And thank you so much, Lily. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. So you guys that are on tomorrow at seven, we're doing a, a uh, an activation and channeling with the archangels and the master teachers. We do that every full moon. This is an especially powerful one. I've got a video on this that I did yesterday. Then Thursday, there's no upload because Heather is, is dancing with the volcano on, on, in Hawaii. So she's hang, hanging out with Pele for a while. So we're going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a live and teach you guys some new grounding techniques also, because as we're expanding and growing, we still got to be grounded. We still got to have our roots in the earth. You know, we're, we're spirit having physical experiences. So we want to bring our spiritual experiences into this physical realm so we can transcend the density. We can transcend the 3D and, and, and start to remember who we are again, basically. So we're going to do that. And uh, very good. And um Yes, Susan is, is one of our biggest fans. So thank you for that as well. And thank you, everybody. And uh, very good. So we're going to say good night. Thanks again. Good night. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.